Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly ramp up and this week we're going to take a look at what the heck is going on at Intel. They've gotten very aggressive against Apple in the past week and this is coinciding with a new CEO taking over and I think they are making some bad strategic decisions here. Let's get to it. Now, just in case you missed some of the drama going on here, Intel hired Justin Long, who played the Mac character on the Mac vs. PC ads that ran over a decade ago. Incidentally, those ads started running around the time that Apple switched the processors on the Mac from PowerPC to Intel. And now Justin Long is back touting the benefits of Intel-powered PCs over choosing a Mac. And you can see uh, the ads that are going up on the link you see on screen here. This will link to a playlist. And this ad campaign is coinciding with the arrival of a new CEO at Intel, Patrick Gelsinger. Uh, he was previously at VMware, and he's taking a very aggressive approach here to getting the company back on track. They've had a lot of stumbles getting new generations of their processor on smaller dies out the door. And he had an interesting quote here in a local paper where he said, we have to deliver better products to the PC ecosystem than any possible thing that a lifestyle company in Cupertino makes. Uh, there's some fighting words, and that was something he was saying even before he really got started here. And now that he's there, it looks like he has kind of directed the marketing team to come up with these ads. And, you know, they're just not making any sense to me because in this instance here, uh, Intel tweeted out Justin Long holding up a bunch of dongles, criticizing the USB-C and Thunderbolt port that the Macs use as their primary interface. And that's an Intel technology. Intel's been pushing this for years, the one port to rule them all. Use that port and plug all these different things in. And somebody on Twitter here reminded Intel that one of the flagship Intel PCs, the Dell XPS 13, has two USB-C Thunderbolt ports and nothing else. And the XPS 13 is not the only computer configured in this way. Many are, and they are configuring their computers like this because Intel has been pushing Thunderbolt for years in an effort to make PCs thinner and lighter and more attractive to consumers. So it feels more like he's just lashing out here, trying to make a mark as opposed to actually thinking about what they're saying because it really is attacking some of their core technologies that they've been telling us have been better all of these years and now they're not i don't get it now normally i don't have a problem with comparative advertising we see it all the time in the consumer electronics world and i think it's important if you have a better product to use some of your marketing dollars to talk about how maybe your product is better than a competitor's. However, Intel in this case does not have the better product and their ad campaign acknowledges that fact because they're not talking about performance at all uh, in this campaign, just flexibility. And the reason is, is that Apple, of course, launched their M1 processor on the new line of Macs that was introduced in November of 2020. We reviewed the new MacBook Air, which is what is powering the slideshow right here. And I was blown away by its performance, especially given that it's completely fanless. It barely gets hot and it has now become my daily driver machine. I am using this for everything that I do. And I was not anticipating getting that much functionality out of a first generation processor like this, but I'm doing everything from all of my meetings to uh, editing video, you name it, this has become my go-to machine. I just plug it into different docking stations around the house and get to work. And I was particularly impressed with the gaming performance on the M1, even when it was running Intel software. There's an emulation layer that Apple built into the operating system so you can just boot up Intel software without having to do anything. And games like Rocket League and some of the other ones that we tested were light years better on the M1 versus the Intel-based MacBook Air. And check out this benchmark we ran during the review. You can see that the M1 here on the 3 d Mark Wildlife multi-platform benchmark bested the Dell XPS 13 running with the latest version of Intel's Iris graphics. And that is really amazing, especially given that when you're running that benchmark, the fans are going on the Dell, you're feeling it heat up. This thing stays silent, just gets a little bit warm, but that's it. Even when I do my conference calls and stuff, when I plug this thing into the dock, I don't hear it. On my Intel MacBook, I hear it going constantly. It's really hot on the desk. This thing is cool, silent, and super fast, and I can't tell you how good it is. 
Here's one more benchmark to show you, which is this final cut rendering thing that we run on some of our Mac reviews. And you can see here a 5K final cut project got rendered out on the M1 in 18 seconds. And on the Intel version of the MacBook that we looked at, it took almost three minutes for that same test to run. You can also see there that the Mac Mini with an external GPU attached uh, did it in about 20 seconds. So this thing with far less power consumption is delivering just outstanding performance. And Adobe is reporting that their M1 version of Photoshop is running 50% faster on the M1 versus a comparably equipped Intel-based MacBook. And this again speaks to how Apple has really optimized things for what most users are using computers for these days. And that is why we're seeing this performance increase. And I look at a lot of laptops and for the number of years that I've been doing this, there seems to be a very incremental update from one year to the next with Intel and even with Apple because they were running with Intel processors. But this really feels different to me. I felt that from the moment I booted it up that this is a big generational jump in performance and this is only the first generation of this new technology and this is what Intel is up against. But what I think is going on here is the fact that Intel is really stumbling as the market is changing for computers. It used to be you bought a computer, it did computer things and that was it. But now of course computers are in many different verticals. So one of the markets that Intel lost completely uh, was the mobile phone and tablet market. For a short time, you could buy a number of mobile phones and tablets powered by Intel processors. Most of them use the Atom chipset. But unfortunately, Intel was not able to keep up with the ARM-based chips coming from Qualcomm with their Snapdragons and a few other manufacturers. And as a result now, you can't get an Intel smartphone anywhere because they just don't exist. Intel just gave up on the whole market. And that is a huge industry to lose. Intel also lost the game console market. They did have their chips in the original Xbox, but by the time the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 came around, both Sony and Microsoft went with AMD for those platforms. And of course, the Xbox Series X and S and the new PlayStation 5 are also powered by AMD chips, so they lost that. And now at risk are consumer PCs. And I think Intel is seeing some rumblings of what happened in the mobile space with the Apple chipset here. And it's not that Apple has a lot of market share. They don't. Uh, as of the fourth quarter of 2020, according to IDC here, Apple only had 8% of the market. But check out the year over year growth here. So they picked up about 49% more sales in 2020 over the same time in 2019. And the M1 Max came out right in the middle of the quarter. And I think that drove a lot of holiday sales because consumers want something that is quiet and fast and doesn't get too hot and has good battery life. And that is what the M1 is all about. It is remarkably good. And that is going to start pushing the industry in new directions because HP, Dell, Lenovo, and Acer now have to keep up with this because although Apple is only 8% of the market here, uh, that is still market share that Apple is taking from these other manufacturers. And most people don't buy computers every two weeks like I do. They buy them once every couple of years. And once Apple's got one locked in, that's another customer that they lose for a long period of time. And I bet uh, these folks are feeling a little bit of pressure right now and that pressure is going upstream to Intel and Intel is lashing out at Apple to try to convince consumers to stick with their market partners for a little bit longer until they can get something better out the door. And we're already seeing some examples of that pressure because of the crazy good year that AMD has been having. Uh, their chips have suddenly gotten better and faster and cheaper than what Intel offers. And I know a lot of you watching are preferring to buy AMD-based machines over Intel these days. And that not only puts the consumer PC market at further risk for Intel, it also eats into their gaming market, the creative market, and the server and the data center market because AMD is targeting all of those verticals that Intel has long dominated. And we're starting to see now more manufacturers offer AMD-based computers. We saw a bunch this year, including some models where customers now have a choice between an Intel or an AMD chip. 
and in a few of the head-to-heads that I've done, the AMDs really are much better, especially graphically, and that is often very important for consumers. And there's also pressure coming down from Microsoft and Qualcomm because Microsoft has a very nice version of Windows that runs on ARM-based processors. Uh, right now it runs mostly on Snapdragon chips from Qualcomm, and they've recently added 64-bit support for emulating Intel processors. And as we found in a follow-up video that we did on the M1 Mac, uh, the M1 Mac Air can run Windows sometimes better than the Intel-based MacBook Air with Intel software running in emulation. So there is just a lot going on here. And I think as more and more consumers see what you can do on a Mac, they're gonna want that on their PCs. And Intel doesn't have a solution just yet on the market to satisfy the needs of customers and the needs of what PC manufacturers are going to be asking of Intel. So what's going to happen next? Well, we don't have long to wait because tomorrow the new Intel CEO is going to host a webcast about the roadmap the company will be on under his leadership. And it'll be interesting to hear what he's going to announce and how the company plans to offer alternatives to the ARM-based processors out there along with AMD because Intel is in a position where they do risk losing markets that they've held on to for a long period of time. I don't think Intel is going to disappear tomorrow, but you might see a slow chipping away of some of the markets that they've dominated for decades over the fact that they've gotten a little complacent and unable to advance their technology faster than their competitors. I got a tweet the other day from my friend Fanless Tech who follows a lot of the power efficient processors out there. And he thinks that short term, uh, they're going to see lower power consuming CPUs and some real advancements with the new Alder Lake generation of chips. And he thinks that they're going to be putting a lot into R&D and really advancing uh, what comes next. And we'll have to just wait and see uh, what the CEO has to say tomorrow and what Intel does to respond to its competitors. I don't think they've been in a position like this in quite some time. So this is a new uh, thing for the company to have to deal with. And sometimes change in a big operation like that is hard to do. But we'll see what happens. He's got a pretty big road ahead of him there. Uh, one thing you can be assured of, though, is that when you can't compete, you litigate. And it looks like there's something going on right now with the Rosetta emulation layer on the M1 MacBooks. A uh, gentleman here by the name of Steve Moser uh, discovered some language in the code of Mac uh, OS 11.3 Beta 3, which is talking about how Rosetta, which is how the M1 MacBook runs Intel software, may not be available in some regions. And it's possible that Intel might be exerting some legal maneuvers here to limit Intel software running on non-Intel chips. So stay tuned. I think there's going to be a lot more coming here. I hope that Intel is able to compete their way out of this as opposed to litigate their way out of it. But this might actually just speed up the process away from traditional Intel processors to something more efficient. But in the short term here, I think Intel is going to continue what I think is a short-sighted marketing campaign against Apple, uh, one that I think is not going to benefit them much. It might actually hurt them in the end because it is drawing attention to a better product that their competitor is currently making. And the only way for Intel to get out of this rut they're in is to make a better product. Time will tell. I would love to hear your thoughts on this down below in the comment stream. But I can tell you what makes my product better, the support of all of you. And I want to thank some super chatters this week who contributed during one of my live streams. Chanflay98, Wolf Factor 56, and Handquake all made a contribution. We didn't have any new members this week, so your name could be up in this spot next week. And you can get yourself there by supporting the channel at lon.tv support, where you can make a monthly or a one-time contribution. We also support the YouTube membership program and Floatplane. You can find me on a lot of other platforms as well, including my podcast, which is an audio version of this show that's on most major podcatchers. And of course, we've got my 
Amazon page at lon.tv slash Amazon shop where most of my videos appear along with my live streams. So definitely follow me there too if you're not doing so already. You can engage with the channel through my email list at lon.tv slash email. We've got my Facebook group at lon.tv slash Facebook group where you can interact with me and other fans of the show. And then of course we've got my store which I will be updating shortly with some new stuff to get rid of. And basically what I do is sell the items that I purchased for review and you can often get something new at a pretty low price, but there's only one of everything because that's all I got is the one that I bought for the review. And if you want to get notified whenever I add something to the store, you can go to lon.tv slash store alert. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Thank you all for your continued support. I'll be back with a bunch of new videos this week and a few live streams too. So set those notifications. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the lon.tv supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mark Bollinger, Sergio Morales, Mark Dell, Jim Callagher, and Stephen Sue. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.